Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with Jay Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, today we're going to look at the topic of counting concepts and conventions. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to outline the concepts and conventions that guide the accounting process. And we begin by looking at the definition of accounting concepts. What are accounting concepts? An accounting concept is an assumption that underlines the preparation of the financial statements of an organization. Or you could simply say they are rules which outline how the activities of a business are recorded. So how we go about recording transactions, or you go about taking on all those activities, recording those activities so that at the end of the period, they can understand how you arrive at your result. Now, let us look at the benefits of accounting concepts. What are the benefits to be derived from applying the accounting concepts? The first one there is that they ensure that everyone treats particular situations in the same way. So once you apply the concepts, you're going to treat the situations in the same way. So if a transaction occurred, how is it that you're going to treat that? Once you apply the concepts, then everyone will be treating those the same way. The other is that they provide guide guidelines for the treatment of new or unfamiliar accounting problems. And the final one there, once the concepts are applied, then they set a benchmark for understandability. So all the users of the financial statements would understand how is it that you arrived by a particular result. Now, let us zoom into the different types of accounting concepts. And we're gonna begin by looking at the business entity concept. And this one sees the business and its owners as two separate entities. So basically, the business is seen as separate from the owner. So therefore, it must be treated as a legal person in its own right. What we're saying is that whatever transaction took place in the business does not equal to what the owner does for his personal life. So the transactions that are recorded in the financial statements must relate only to the business entity and not include any that relate to the owner's private life. So an example is where an owner may purchase the, a motor vehicle for his personal use. Because it is personal use, it does not relate to the business. This transaction is not recorded in the business books because that motor vehicle simply does not belong to the business. It, be it belongs to the owner. On the other end, if it is that the owner had purchased that motor vehicle to be used in the business, then that would be recorded in the business books. And this is why once the owner injects money invested in the business, then that is recorded as capital. And if it is that the owner withdraw cash or any other asset for personal use, it results in drawings. Okay? Now, now that we're finished with this one, let us zoom into the going concern concept. And this is where a business is expected to continue for a long time. Hence, transactions are recorded with this in mind. What we're saying is that a business is assumed to have a life. Therefore, it is assumed that the activities of a business will continue into the foreseeable future. So that is the going concern. And that is why within the financial statements, the business will record the assets at historical cost. However, if it is that the business decided to go into liquidation, it is not going to continue any further than the business may decide to sell the assets. 
but in selling the assets, they will be sold at the actual value that it is no rather than selling it at the cost price. And another thing, businesses, they tend to see it as, hey, we start a business now. There's no need that we're going to think of it, saying that we're going to end the business come next month or end the business come next year. Because once you start business, what you're looking for, you're looking for a lifetime. And once you're, you have that in mind, basically, that is the going concern concept. Now, let's zoom into another concept, and that one is the dual aspect concept. And this is where business transaction requires recordation into two different accounts. This concept is the basis of double entry accounting, which is required by all accounting frameworks in order to produce reliable financial statements. And this is why you are required to have debit entries and credit entry for transactions. And in that case, you'll find that the total debit amounts would be equal to total credit amounts. So basically what I'm saying is that debits, total debit is equal to total credit. And uh, once you apply the double entry concept for every debit, there is a corresponding credit then that is the dual aspect concept. It is also referred to as the double entry concept. And coming out of that, we have the equation assets equal to capital plus liabilities. So your total assets will always be equal to capital plus liabilities once you apply the dual aspect concept. Now, let us move into another concept there, and that is the accrual and matching concept. The matching principle ensures that revenues and all their associated expenses are recorded in the same accounting period. And this is why when you're preparing financial statements and you're adjusting for accruals and prepayments, you're usually told to add accruals and less prepayments. Why do you add accruals? Say, for example, the electricity bill for this year was $20,000. However, the amount that was paid is $15,000. What is the amount that you would record in the financial statements under the accrual concept? You would have to record the actual amount that was incurred for the year, and that would have been the $20,000. So the amount that was paid, which is the 15,000 plus the 5,000 that is owing, would result in that 20,000. On the other end is the, the prepayment. You subtract that because if the bill is 20,000 and you went ahead and paid 22,000, that extra 2,000 does not relate to this year because the amount that was incurred for this year is only 20,000. And that is what you should record. So, under this concept, whether or not the cash is received or the amount is owing, then you should record only what is related to the accounting period. So the matching principle is the basis on which the accrual accounting method of bookkeeping is built. Now let us move into another concept and that is the prudence concept. This one is also referred to as the conservatism concept. This ensure that profit is not shown as being too high or that assets are shown as too high a value and that the financial statements are neutral. So it is not appropriate to del deliberately overstate assets or revenues. If profit is overstated, a trader may believe that his income is more than it really is, and he may withdraw too much money from the business, which will deplete capital. If it happens too often, the business will collapse and there will not be enough money to pay creditors or renew assets when they are worn out. The rule is Profit should not be overstated. Losses should be provided for as soon as they are recognized. So the income should not be overstated. 
Note briefly, the concept ensure that profits are realistic without being overstated. So what the prudence concept does, it helps in situations where there is some doubt about the value of asset or the amount of profit being made by ensuring that, it, that in those cases, the lower value of an asset or profit is reported. And under the prudence concept, we treat provision for depreciation. So that is the concept that is used to apply provision for depreciation, as well as to treat the provisions for doubtful debts. So those would relate to prudence, otherwise called conservatism. And we're now going to look at another concept, which is the consistency concept. Consistency, the rule that accounting policies should be carried out in the same way each period. The consistency convention says that when a business has fixed a method for the accounting treatment of an item, it will enter all similar items exactly the same way when preparing financial statements in the following years. So for example, last year, the straight line method was used to, to depreciate motor vehicle. This year, you're expected under the consistency concept to use that very same straight line method or the reducing balance method was used. This year, you're expected to use the reducing balance and the next year and the following year and so on. We're not saying that you're not able to change, but of course there are protocols in changing that. Another example of applying the consistency concept is where you use, for example, the last in first out method to value the inventory or the first in first out method to value inventory or even the average cost method to value inventory. So those would fall under the consistency concept. So remember, whatever method was used the previous year to treat the, a particular item is the same method that you're expected to use throughout the other years of the life of the item within the business. And we're now going to look at the last concept there and I was just looking at the main concepts and that one is materiality. A business may depart from the generally accepted principles for recording some transactions when the amounts involved are not considered material, basically not significant in relation to the amounts of the other items in their profit and loss accounts and balance sheet. Now with the materiality concept, you would find that if it is that the business, the business may report on its balance sheet, the amounts for fixed assets in thousands, right? However, there is something that was purchased, would be classified, could be classified as an asset. However, the value was not material enough in that thousands, meaning it is lower than the thousands. So therefore, what the business would do is report that as a revenue expenditure, basically an expense. An example of this would be stationaries, office supplies, right? So those things would have been expensed instead of reporting that those as fixed assets. Why? Because the value of those are not material enough for you to classify it as fixed asset, okay? So that takes us to the end of our lesson, looking at the main accounting concepts. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.